if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. Wait, wait, what, what did Richard Dawkins, the world famous atheist, what did he just say? But, but I thought, doesn't he make a living deconstructing and denying Christian belief? Okay. Well, anyway, this is Truth Unbound. I'm Walter Swaim, your host, and together we're going to find out the answers to this from God's Word, okay? This confusion we're hearing, and we're going to do that right now. Hey, everybody, just real quick, two things before we jump headlong into this whole thing. If you're seeking to go deeper in the Word of God and at the same time earn a, earn a solid academic degree from certificate all the way through a doctorate and do so around your work and activities and at one-third the cost of other Bible colleges and seminaries, then you need to go to LBU. Okay? Apply today at lbu.edu forward slash apply. Also, lately I have received replies and emails to our podcast thanking Truth Unbound for helping them to see the truth of God more clearly for the questions and dilemmas that, that folks are having today. So if you are impacted in the same way and want more of it and you want others to, be, uh, to, to have knowledge of this and to be involved, then would you click on like? and subscribe and share this podcast with everyone you can today. All right, so is Richard Dawkins, the famed atheist, turning to Jesus? Let's find out. Okay, so here is evolutionary scientist and leading voice for atheism for years, Richard Dawkins. Here he is speaking in response to the program's host questions about Islam replacing Christianity in England. Listen up, watch this. Professor Dawkins, it's very good to have you join us to discuss whether it matters that Christianity is playing a diminishing role in national life. Uh, welcome to LBC. Thank you. And what would be your Easter message? I, I mean, I've, I've said a few things. Uh, what, would be, what would you tell the nation? Well, I must say I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, I I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we... Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that as we know, church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. Wow. So the Christian listeners heard this like me, and with some suspicion still, we, we went, whoa, did I hear that right? Is, is this a major turning of the tide? is one of the most well-known voices in atheism. When he sees Islam coming and moving into his neighborhood, is he having his own come-to-Jesus moment? This could have a huge impact on millions if he did give his life to Christ. I mean, can you imagine 
the guy who wrote The God Delusion and the book Outgrowing God and also The Blind Watchmaker, repenting of his sin and placing his trust in Jesus and following him? Wow. Wow. But, alas, hold on. It didn't last long. Now, you can almost notice he has to pause and find his thoughts. He's He has that, uh-oh, what did I just say look on his face, and how am I going to get out of this uh, type of look on his face? So he quickly digresses. He takes a few steps back, and then he says this. I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. And then continues with this. Yes, but I, I must emphasize that, that I think that, that, that the things that Christians believe are, are actually nonsense. I mean, I, th- I think that um, when, you, when you say you, 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 you waver, I, I wanted to ask you, when, do you actually believe that Jesus had a, a virgin for a mother? Do you actually believe he rose from the dead? I, I suspect well, weirdly, you probably don't. Since... And then once more, this is what he says. I, I don't want to be misunderstood. I mean, I, I do think it's nonsense. But, uh, but um, the, the, the Christian belief, for the, I mean, today is Easter, and, and of course I don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I don't believe you do either. Now, this reeks of hypocrisy, and it comes out, okay? It's the old-fashioned cliche, you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's exactly that kind of cultural Christianity that has gotten the UK into the spiritual darkness and vacuum that it is in, and Islam's more than willing to fill that vacuum. He's literally wanting the benefits of Christianity, the warmth, the decency and behavior, the beautiful music, the solid moral base. And and the key fact not mentioned here, another benefit that he's not stating directly, but enjoying in that very moment, is that Christianity actually provides the basis of this freedom to people, that God-given, self-evident, unalienable right come from God as revealed in his word. And that one in particular freedom is the freedom of speech. You see, Dawkins I'm sorry, enjoys that freedom of speech to tear down Judeo-Christian beliefs without fear of reprisal all that he wants to, okay? But he finds the Christian beliefs ridiculous, but then wants to enjoy the benefits, including that of tearing those beliefs apart freely and openly without harm coming to him for doing so. He wants, is, he wants all of that, but he, he, he can't have that and not have the Christianity that goes with it. You see, the Islam he speaks of does not tolerate criticism of its God, prophet, or its holy book, the Koran. He enjoys that Judeo-Christian-based freedom in England and also in the U.S., but he can't do the same in the streets of Afghanistan or Iran. What is What he isn't getting still is you can have the benefits of Christianity without, without at least respecting and protecting and preserving the very doctrines and, and beliefs these rights and freedoms are founded on and come from. You see, if you destroy Christianity, you destroy the culture it is intertwined with. You can't have a culture that is Christian without Christianity. Take those beliefs away, and the benefits will soon go away as well. Dawkins isn't having a come-to-Jesus moment here. He's not becoming a Christian. He's still very far away from it. And still in denial of the very Jesus, born of a virgin, God in flesh, died, buried, and risen again to give you, me, and him forgiveness of sin and eternal life if we simply turn from our sin and believe in Jesus once and for all. Oh, and one more thing. Before we get to too hot under the collar, realizing what he is really saying and the hypocrisy that is evident there, let us be mindful that we too, as believers, as followers of Jesus, who do believe in Jesus and the basic uh, basic tenets of Christianity, that we also live so often as practical atheists and cultural Christians as well. You see, if you listen real closely to Dawkins, he said he is a cultural Christian. 
it. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. Well, what is a cultural Christian? Well, Patrick Morley, founder and leader of a men's ministry for many years called Man in the Mirror. Uh, Patrick Morley was really the first to really coin the term cultural Christian or cultural Christianity some 30 plus years ago. You see, a cultural Christian is, and I'm I'm quoting from his book, The Seven Seasons of a Man's Life. He also wrote this in his earlier book, Walking with Christ in the Details of Life. And this is what he uh, very aptly defines cultural Christianity as. And I quote, Cultural Christianity means to seek the God or gods we want and not the God who is. He came to this realization, Patrick Morley did, in his own life, and he puts it like this, and I quote, At the end of two and a half years of self-examination, I realized I had been living the life of a cultural Christian, not a biblical Christian. What I mean is that even though I believed in Jesus, there was nothing exceptional about my lifestyle that would recommend him to others. I was Jekyll on Sunday, but come Monday morning, I was Hyde. My life was shaped more by the forces of commerce than by Christ. I was reading my Bible for comfort, but Forbes for direction. And I hated it. I hated my life even more than before, I became a follower of Christ because now I knew the difference between a statistical Christian and a true believer. Simply put, I was living a double life. Don't misunderstand. I was a good man. I was leading a moral life. But that only deceived me into thinking I was following the God of the Bible when in reality I was following the God of my imagination. That's why it took so long to sort things out. I was committed to the God I wanted. So, believer, before you and I point at Dawkins with blame with what he's saying and his hypocrisy, point back to yourself as well and ask yourself, am I a cultural Christian? The cultural Christian lives a moral life, but no surrendered life. The cultural Christian lives half surrendered and not all in with Jesus as Lord. The cultural Christian goes to church as a social event and not as a sitting at the table with the family worshiping God together gathering. The cultural Christian believes with their mind but not with their heart and serves themselves instead of serving the God who is no matter what he wants of you. You see, American cultural Christianity and cultural Christians were never more exposed than during the shutdowns and following months of the big C virus in 2021 and 2020 2020 and 2021. They left the church in droves and most never came back. They made sure they got their shots and had their triple masks on at all times and accusing nonconformists of not loving others like Jesus would. But then when it came time to go back to church and be involved and engaged in the life of their church that they went to before, then they were absent from those services, even though they attended ball games on the same day as soon as they started up again. Giving, serving, taking the gospel to their friends in the world, world missions, small groups, study and gatherings and worship services were all but forgotten in their lives, leaving the faithful few to hold the water. I saw this firsthand as a pastor during that period of time, and it grieved me and convicted me as well of my own cultural Christian Christian moments and actions too. So let's call it like it is with Dawkins. It is hypocrisy to yearn for a culture that is Christian while doing everything possible to destroy the Christianity that builds it. But it is equally sad and destructive when the follower of Jesus wants to enjoy the benefits of Christianity and church and society while not engaging others with the gospel, not living their faith outwardly and publicly, not deepening their fellowship with God and not fully surrendered to him. So believer, let's not be like Dawkins and the cultural Christian. Let's be true believers, followers of Jesus. Hey, I hope this has helped you to understand this more and What are your thoughts? 
express your ideas and your responses to this in the reply and comment section to this podcast or shoot an email to me at info at truthunbound.org. And hey, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, follow, and then also share the podcast today. Send somebody a link to it, point them to it, talk to them about it, and let them know. And always remember to follow Jesus because when you follow Jesus, you'll always follow the truth.